first topic. Um, yeah, the immigration uh, law, which was basically aimed at clarifying Japan's immigration law. Part of the reason that Japan was condemned by the United Nations for having indefinite detention of people. If you come to Japan and you overstay your tourist visa or your work visa or you violate the terms of it and they take you into immigration detention, which I have heard described accurately by lawyers who uh, support people in immigration detention, it's the outer circle of hell. It's Japanese prison is bad enough because you know you basically have no human rights in that but you're and this is probably true actually in any country in prisons you're still a citizen you still have a certain degree of civil rights in the prison system in the immigration system you're basically like a non-person you know the immigration laws which only really became a thing in the 20th century have created a concept of a person being an illegal person which didn't exist before which I, I, I just despise the concept of someone being by their immigration permit status an illegal person but it means that when you go into these immigration detention things they, they don't even use the same standards or the same sort of protections that you would have in prisons uh, and, and this highlights that case. There are so many cases of mysterious uh, deaths and so on that happen in, in, in Japanese immigration detention centers. Uh, and because Japan had this weird thing that um, it, it doesn't have, it didn't have powers or doesn't have powers to uh, force deportation of people. If people do not cooperate with deportation, you basically just stay in limbo in immigration detention indefinitely. And when you consider that Japan only approves out of 20,000 applicants, something like uh, 50 to 60 refugees every year, um, even if the vast majority of refugees are fake and there's no proof of you know that per se but they clearly reject a lot of people that are genuinely afraid to go back to their home countries and so they end up just sitting perpetually in immigration detention and if you get into trouble in that immigration detention like medical problems or abuse by uh, guards and security workers and so on um, you know the prison doctor the medical systems and so on all, all the backups they have in prisons don't exist in these immigration detention centers and amnesty's made a comment about this that uh, yeah people die in these uh, centers all the time and when you're in some the thing about at least when you're in a jail or a prison you you know when you are going to get out but when you're in immigration detention in Japan it is you know it's, it's a gulag it's been described like that um, and, and, and this is something which has been highlighted that you know it, it can actually play it can be especially stressful um, to be in the situation and not knowing how it's going to how you, you're going to get it resolved and remember this can happen not just from overstaying your visa it can happen from you, weed <laughs> it can happen from what you might think is a petty sort of a crime uh, when they talk about for example when you're traveling into Japan and they make you sign up that you will uh, stay at your home and you will respect the uh, you know voluntary quarantine and you might think screw that I'm going to rapongi and go drinking as 30% of Japanese people in voluntary quarantine do it's been proven that they don't abide by the terms of it but Japanese are not subject to penalties for vi violating voluntary quarantine but foreigners are subject to deportation which means they'll drop you into a detention center and what happened in uh, a recent case right as they were proposing to amend the immigration law in a way that would actually allow Japanese government to forcibly uh, deport people which most countries can do but Japan didn't have those didn't give itself those powers which was part of the reason for the perpetual detention um, so the immigration law in response to the United Nations saying that Japan was abusing the human rights of immigration detainees uh, rather than try to improve the human rights of the detainees it simply tried to make it easier to just boot them out uh, and, and kick them out of the country and there was a case where uh, I've talked about it before there was a Sri Lankan woman who um, was in Japan on a, uh, I believe, a student visa, uh, but she was uh, married to another foreigner who was working in Japan. Um, she uh, sought help for domestic abuse, domestic violence from the police, and when the police, she went to the police and the police discovered that she, she had, her visa had expired, they uh, arrested her and sent her to immigration detention where she was apparently for, had been for a year. Uh, at a time that she uh, had uh, some sort of an aneurysm, she had a sort of uh, apparently an internal sort of brain hemorrhage. Uh, she was bleeding from her nose. She was seeking, uh, she was asking the guards for help. The guards ignored her request for medical attention and she died of medical attention. Her family, understandably in Sri Lanka, were outraged. They're actually in Japan right now. They're demanding that the immigration justice, you know, the, who is also the justice minister, immigration comes under the justice ministry in Japan. They're demanding that the government full, put a have a full inquiry into uh, finding out how she was uh, able to die while in the custody of the Justice uh, Ministry of Justice 
and, and put in proper measures to make sure it doesn't happen again, including as part of the clarification of how she died, uh, to disclose the security camera footage from within the detention centres to show uh, what happened to her. The Minister of Justice, uh, whose name escapes me right now, but uh, met with the family the other day, apparently wept with them, said that she has a son the same age as the daughter who uh, who died. It said that she sympathised with them and would cooperate with them, but at the same time, in committees with the family present, she, she uh, absolutely said that uh, the government uh, would never share the video of the incident and um, they have to be allowed to handle this their own way, i.e. basically, although, although the family is in Japan and they've extended their stay in Japan to try to get justice, at least to find out what happened and to make sure this doesn't happen again to anyone else, uh, credit to the family actually being very brave doing that, the justice minister, even to their faces, even crying and uh, hugging them, and then completely uh, it, it treats them like crap, basically. Um, and, and in light of that and the controversy around this and the treatment of detainees and the fact that the proposed immigration amendment law didn't address that, the uh, opposition said this is not an acceptable situation to amend the immigration law right now with all of this going on. The government agreed it didn't need the drama, it had other bills, so uh, they decided to toss out the amendment to the law as this continues, which I suppose is kind of a win, but at the same time, the fact that the Justice Minister is not actually uh, proposing to do anything about this in terms of a real investigation, as the family's quite reasonably asking for. On top of that, the, uh, the Prime Minister, but he basically said... Um, uh, yeah, he, he, you know, he didn't think that the Im immigration is really a politically sensitive issue anyway. Um, so uh, he thought that, yeah, it was better to deal with the immigration amendment. It wasn't as urgent as things like the budget and so on. So we'll come back to that later. And that comment itself was really, really interesting. On the one hand, um, of course, I actually appreciate that in most countries, immigration is just one of those things that it's a very easy card to throw out when you're a nationalist and you're appealing to people who are afraid for their jobs or afraid about the economy or hate foreigners or whatever. It's a very easy thing to say, hey, we need to control immigration more. And even in New Zealand, this this is a thing, New Zealand First, literally a party called New Zealand First is like the third or fourth biggest political party in New Zealand. They had the balance of power for a time. Um, and they're, they're literally anti-immigration. That's how that is. Basically, old people who don't want Asians in New Zealand literally like held up the, the party that held the balance of power in New Zealand for a long time. The Australian, I would say even worse equivalent, <laughs> uh, One Nation Party is, is the same. You think about how in every, part, every country, you know, um, how immigration is such a, a sort of a, an easy topic for people to sort of abuse for political gain. In Japan, it hasn't been used that way. It's never been politicized. It's one of the few good things about having the LDP stably in power. And they are a right-wing government, so they don't need to appeal to be more right-wing than themselves already. And what's happened is in the time that I've been in Japan, of course, immigration has radically in increased. There was like uh, three or 400,000 foreigners when I got here in the late 1990s, and now there's like nearly 3 million. Um, you know, the, the number of foreigners and the ease of the, the length of visas that are available have all radically increased. And this has been done by the bureaucracy. It hasn't been debated in Parliament, and I think that's actually a good thing. However, the fact that the Prime Minister thinks that immigration is not really a, 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 an important issue and that they can push it back to that's literally what he said. Uh, again, when you think about the demographic issue is one of the most important things facing Japan at the moment. Um, and, and, and again, the general attitude of the government here of just not understanding or caring or doing the right thing, uh, and this underscoring particularly the situation with this death in custody, uh, just highlights uh, what, a, in, a, in a way, even when they're doing the right thing, they still find a way to do it wrong, <laughs> the Japanese government. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's a terrible mess. Uh, I really uh, hope uh, for the family that they do. Um, you know what, this, is, this has come up in so many cases. There are so many cases of mysterious deaths happening in immigration detention, and it's literally people being killed by the Justice Ministry. So, um, yeah, yeah, I really hope that this one gets clarified and that it does result in... I mean, it's bad enough. You think about it. Well, the thing about getting, like, deported, it's worse than jail in some ways. I mean, if you've got people, if you've got roots, if you've got a job, if you've got, um, you know, family or whatever, um, you can be cut off from all of that. It's like losing your entire life in a place. Uh, so, you know, often... Uh, when you think about small crimes, and this is the risk that you have as a foreigner on a visa in Japan, that, you know, um, it's not just a permit violation or whatever, even small things that can lead to that, it's such a big risk. Uh, and to think on top of that, on top of basically facing losing your whole life in Japan, um, that you can actually have physical, you know, danger, uh, and the stress of not knowing how, you know, how long you're going to be in detention, 
um, yeah, Japan struggles with this and that needs to improve. So uh, it's good that attention is being drawn to it. That's and uh, Dan H, Denmark and Rwanda have signed a deal to transfer asylum seekers from Denmark to Rwanda. Also, Denmark is trying to transfer Syrian refugees back to Syria due to them claiming it's safe now. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> Is it safe? I mean, Rwanda, well, I suppose if you were an escaped uh, genocide, you know, war criminal, that, that I, I could understand perhaps Rwanda actually has a wonderful reputation right now in terms of the economy, although the, the politically it still is a, a little bit tough. But Syria, isn't that a little bit soon? I mean, I know that it's controversial there. That, that's, that's remarkable. Well, Japan's policy is simply to reject everybody. I think of like the 20 that they accepted. Uh, a couple were Syrian, uh, like from when the war was happening, but there's so many people that don't. So yeah, yeah, obviously, uh, not many countries can be said to be showing a good example on refugees. I mean, Australia is one of the craziest, of course. They not only put them in these horrible sort of effectively concentration camps, but they, they actually move them to Nauru, a tropical, you know, Pacific island away from Australia for it. Uh, and all sorts of problems there. So, you know, um, probably no point comparing but certainly certainly you know japan can do better at what it does uh, quint ranker does japan have a guarantee of due process uh it does but in most countries the guarantee of due process doesn't apply to um immigration um detainees uh because you know technically they're treated as if they're not supposed to exist in the country in the first place it's often an exception um so yeah